Welcome to my psychology channel, where I talk about relationships, growing up in dysfunctional families, addictions, and more. In this video, we are going to explore the role of forgiveness in physical and mental health outcomes, the dark side of forgiveness, and I will give you some tools that you can use if you choose to embark on the forgiveness journey. Forgiveness is possibly one of the most difficult psychological journeys. However, it is worthwhile as decades of academic inquiry and research have shown that forgiveness improves mental and physical well-being, including improved cardiovascular health, immune health, and cholesterol levels. Uh, to get started, I want to share my definition of forgiveness as it comprises this video and there are numerous varying philosophical and religious thought on this topic. But to me, forgiveness is the alchemy that occurs when one is able to let go of negative emotions one holds towards another being. And the word alchemy is key. It is the transformation of emotions. Forgiveness does not mean excusing another person's behavior, minimizing the impact that a given behavior had on the material, psychological, physiological, or emotional impact in one's life. Forgiveness is the process of letting go of the negative emotional feelings that are directed towards another person. And why is it useful to forgive? So there's actually a whole area of research that is directed towards understanding forgiveness and the personality traits that are found in people who are more forgiving. So decades of academic studies found that forgiveness is associated with better physical and mental health outcomes. Various study results show that letting go of negative emotions towards another person leads to better sleep quality, reduced fatigue, reduced medication usage, better immune system, lower blood pressure, uh, improved cholesterol levels, improved cardiovascular health, and less complaints about physical pains and unexplained abnormalities. So while holding on to unforgiveness or negative emotions towards another precipitates rumination, avoidance, and revenge, which invites increased attention on the past situation or the person in which your energy is directed towards that individual. So behaviors such as revenge seeking um, and associated emotions cause outcomes such as anxiety, depression, hostility, and even heart disease. So when you, yes, think about the people you hold grudges towards like hatred, resentment, the time you spend thinking about them, or even like, you know, stalking them on social media, um, planning some form of revenge, fantasizing about negative outcomes, carrying anger, that is a lot of energy spent towards that situation and person which takes away your energy, your focus towards other things in your life. Um, and the negative emotional burden leads to decreased health. There's also a, uh, there's also a personality trait that allows people to be just naturally more forgiving. In other words, for some people, it is easier to forgive. The forgiving people also tend to be more agreeable, more emotionally stable, and some research suggests more spiritually or religiously inclined than people who uh, tend to not forgive their transgressors. Uh, there's even some research that suggests that the trait of forgiveness affects physical and mental outcomes more than any other personality traits. So the forgiveness trait is linked to reduced depression and cortisol reactivity. And cortisol is, of course, the stress hormone, so thus less stress. And the forgiveness personality trait is more commonly found in women. So forgiveness holds tremendous health benefits, and I hope you're convinced of that by now. However, there's also a dark side of forgiveness as well. There are people who claim to be forgiving and they preach it, 
that are actually lacking self-esteem and have just really poor boundaries and continue to be in abusive relationships. Now, the health outcomes for those individuals are poor and are more linked with poor cardiovascular health and other negative outcomes. Now, there are many reasons for this, and one being that forgiveness has long held a moral and religious value where people adapt it as a virtue. They want to forgive, they want to see themselves as forgiving, but they don't truly forgive with their heart, their body. They use forgiveness as a rationale to continue relationships that are harmful to them, but they're just too afraid to maybe give them up. So in that sense, forgiveness is a kind of a denial rather than true forgiveness. So how do you not fall into this dark side of forgiveness and give yourself even worse mental and physical health outcomes? Now going back to my definition of forgiveness, it is the emotional alchemy. So the changing of the emotions towards a person or a situation, and this is what makes it so difficult because emotions are emotions. And while you're experiencing them, you can't, you can't just change them by convincing yourself that you don't feel it or that you have forgiven. You cannot trick or fool your heart and physiology into going from radical anger to forgiveness. Also, there are good reasons to experience negative emotions such as anger, rage, resentment, hatred. When you have been abused, lied to, cheated, scammed, and just generally mistreated, it is so, so normal to feel bitter, angry, and rage, and denying or repressing those emotions actually does not lead to better mental or physical health outcomes. So some people use denial, meaning not owning emotions, repressing them, or minimizing the event. Now those people may not spend time you know, talking about the transgress or talking negatively about the situation. They try not to think about it. Oftentimes they even blame themselves for thinking negatively about the individual. But that negative energy that is unprocessed, it just ends up in different places, such as displays towards other individuals or situations, towards the self, or ends up in some negative behavior, such as addiction or eating disorders. So it's really important to allow yourself to feel the full range of emotions that occur naturally and to not skip over that part. As a matter of fact, some studies show that denial actually leads to higher blood pressure, so negative health outcomes. So forgiveness must be truly genuine, not forced, and it is a process. You can't go directly from anger or grief to forgiveness. There is a process that occurs in between. And as I mentioned before, there are people with um, personality traits that allow them to forgive easier. And if you're not at that camp, you can't force yourself to have that personality trait. You can't just enter that personality trait into yourself. And that is totally okay. There's nothing wrong with you because we're all unique. So forgiving yourself when you have difficulty forgiving others is also really important. Now, I want to present some pathways to forgiveness. How can one work on genuine and true forgiveness? Now, to start, I want to talk about four different stages of forgiveness and what they are. The first stage of forgiveness is revenge forgiveness or restitutional forgiveness. It is this feeling that only if the person is proportionally punished for the wrongdoing would it be fair to grant forgiveness? It is also this kind of a guilty feeling that creates some form of a bandage that looks like forgiveness, that comes if the person has made an offering, you know, came to apologize, invested into some form of an action to make up for the wrongdoing. And oftentimes, you think about this happens with couples. There's a conflict, and one person blows up, and says all these terrible, mean things, and then follows up with a bunch of I love you and gifts and acts of kindness and the other partner kind of like gives in and maybe appreciates the positive attention and wants to balance the relationship but the weeds of the negative conflict those those words you know are still lurking in their heart and 
bitterness still remains. Um, stage two of forgiveness is through social pressure or through the law. So the offender maybe gets you know publicly shamed or possibly suffers through some legal consequence, and the offender feels that the pressure to forgive possibly by other people or through the outcome, um, this could be kind of a logical forgiveness where the thoughts and words can come out as forgiving. The person may be kind of bargaining with forgiveness at this stage, um, but the heart has not truly forgiven. Just think about how often you might gossip about someone who has hurt you and you start getting negative feedback from other people asking you to forgive and you know you begin to bargain with yourself kind of playing kind of like a mental game of uh, you know maybe you kind of should forgive. So stage three of forgiveness um, that is granted to maintain social equilibrium the motivation to forgive is greater than the motivation to hold a grudge. In this stage, you may try to see the other person's perspective in the conflict and start offering some logical empathy. Logical empathy is kind of a narrative about what was going on for that other individual, uh, piecing together how the person felt in a logical sense, why they behaved the way that they did, uh, what caused them you know, to commit this act. And then, Stage four of forgiveness is through love. And this is the complete type of forgiveness. In this form of forgiveness, you can offer real emotional empathy to the wrongdoer, hold no conditions or fantasy for revenge, and completely clear yourself of all negative emotions towards that person or the situation that they caused. Now, this does not mean that you are going to remain friends or be in a relationship. It just means that you clear yourself from the grudge that you hold, the fantasy to revenge or the persecution of that individual, the rumination of that event or individual. So I wanted to go over these stages as the beginning to start out uh, you know, how to go on the forgiveness journey because it is important to assess yourself. Think about or even write out on a piece of paper the name of the person you hold a grudge towards in one column. In the other column, write out what happened, you know, the situation, how it made you feel. And in the third column, think about where you are in the forgiveness process. And you have to be really honest with yourself there. There's no right or wrong way to feel about it. You may be in the very beginning stage where you fantasize about um, revenge, about the idea of getting revenge that brings you a lot of pleasure and a sense of justice. And honestly, we really need this in the world. I mean, how else would we be balance out the law and punish individuals who have committed egregious crimes like murder, rape, financial fraud, and even if the crime is not as severe or life-threatening or some form of a life-altering incident, it's still okay to feel this way and to hold this grudge. So after you have assessed where you stand in the forgiveness cycle, you can work to evolve through the stages. If you're in the first stage, the revenge stage, think if it truly makes sense to seek some form of justice. Is there a person from your past who had committed an egregious act and maybe you didn't come forth then? Is that person possibly still out there? Are they maybe hurting other people? Uh, you know, can you still make a police report maybe? This actionable approach to work through anger can direct your anger towards social justice, which can help more people like yourself and the community and society at large. If you can't report a specific person, you can find a group of people similar to yourself and volunteer, like maybe in, in a battered woman's shelter or some other form of a, a victim group that's similar to you. And by helping others, you can also help yourself and find balance. And once again, you're directing your energy towards uh, a positive, constructive action. If you are in the second stage, if you are bargaining with the idea of forgiveness, and in this stage, it helps to be honest with yourself, as with any stage, think about where you're feeling the social pressure and where you stand independently. 
in this stage, it may also be helpful to think about, and this is hard to do, um, what qualities do you see in yourself that you see in the person who hurt you? Very frequently, people who irritate us the most, they allow a degree that we don't allow ourselves. Not that we want that freedom, and yet still, they allow themselves a way of being that we don't allow. When you think about it in these terms, you may start to see a common humanity, a common thread. They can page three, the logical kind of empathy. It can be hidden in the shadow. Actually, when I started making this video for you all, I actually did this exercise myself. And there's this one person that I hold a grudge towards. And when I thought about, you know, what commonalities do we have? What is it that I'm not seeing in myself? I was like, oh, I don't even want to start. I had so much resistance with this exercise. Personally, I was like, no way. We're so different um, that I can't even think of similarities. And then I realized that, yes, we are different because she allows herself the freedom to do things that I don't allow myself. And if I did, I would judge myself severely. And not that I would want those qualities or that lifestyle. Somehow when I thought about it from that perspective, it just kind of freed something in me. It created a feeling of empathy for her life choices that I personally chose to not make for myself. And um, the third stage is where forgiveness is a means of keeping a social equilibrium. In this stage, you're not seeking revenge uh, or apologies. You may even maintain the relationship with this person, but in your heart, you still feel this kind of a stain. And there are several ways to go about this. And if you are in a relationship with that person who hurt you and they're safe to talk to, and you feel comfortable, you might want to share your feelings with them, your experience, and this would give you an opportunity to work through the remainder of the sour feelings that you're holding on um, through you know, putting words to it and these relational actions. There may be an emotional repair process made in the journey. You can also leave it alone and life itself and can like later teach you a lesson, or it just may simply fizzle out. It can happen spontaneously. In this stage, you want to see if you can find emotional to match the logical empathy. Look for commonalities. Think about that individual, maybe like as a child, or think about the struggles that they may have had to endure. Um, were they loved enough? Are they struggling with issues that make life difficult for them? Are they hurt? In thinking about another through that lens, you may find yourself matching emotional empathy with logical empathy. And the emotional empathy is one of the ways that you can reach that final stage, the state of true forgiveness in which you have to let go of the emotional burden of holding a grudge. Now, with all that said, there's not a good formula for forgiveness. And also forgiveness can happen spontaneously, naturally, and over time. Working with a therapist can help the process. And if you're interested in working with me specifically, you can check out all my links below, or you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session um, with me, an individual session. And another thing to keep in mind in regard to forgiveness is also making a uh, sense of the positive outcomes in your life that occurred due to the situation. Was there growth? Did you meet people um, because of the situation you otherwise would not have met? Did you choose a profession you otherwise would not have chosen? See if you can see the incident as an inevitable, inevitable part of your destiny. Um, what did you learn from it? How did it shape you? I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to my channel, please. I will soon release another video on self-forgiveness, which is the cousin of um, forgiving others. Happy healing.